Good afternoon, everyone. It's a quarter past three here in the UK on Friday, the 20th of November. Uh, that's uh, VectorVest US uh, running. Uh, we're into day 45 minutes. So uh, not much has changed, folks. Uh, all of the measures of the trend on VectorVest are up. Uh, the decline's slightly ahead of advances today. And uh, the foot off the gas, as they say, uh, and uh, the color guard showing a neutral situation. VectorVest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. I think that's a good comment. Our market timing indicator tells us uh, that this market is in a mega overbought situation. Anything above 1.65 is a mega overbought situation. And the buy sell ratio at 3.29 is high. Uh, uh, it has to get to 4.25 before that registers uh, a mega overbought situation. So we have got a, a market that's uh, uh, relatively mature, I think, and ready for a pullback. If we have a look at the uh, market timing uh, chart uh, for the US, that's the uh, uh, VectorVest Composite, an equally weighted uh, index of all of the shares that we follow in North America. Uh, that's a three month chart. And uh, as you can see, uh, the stochastic right up around the 100 area, uh, the MTI in that mega oversold at 1.7, and uh, the uh, buy sell ratio 3.31 uh, high. As you can see, the broader market actually stronger than the S&P 500 that I look at uh, in a second. This was the date of the Pfizer announcement and you can see the uh, over broader market that 8,000 shares has in fact broken above that high. That hasn't, I will see in a second, happened on the S&P 500. So we've been sitting in a range now, a very tight little range uh, for pretty much all week. So um, just have to be careful up there about adding to positions. Nevertheless, all of the trends are up. Let's have a look at the S&P 500, and that's the S&P 500, folks. That's the Pfizer top. As you can see, we haven't made a new top there. And that, I know I keep uh, rabbiting on about my Fibonacci levels, but that is 78% of that to the tick. That level is 3640. I will not be happy uh, uh, until I see this market breaking up through that 3640 level. Now, uh, this low that occurred yesterday, uh, that's 78% of this range. At least it is in the overnight market. It's not quite in the cash market. Uh, this means, ladies and gentlemen, that those people that are short and are sure this market is going to fall, God bless them, uh, I've shorted it up there. And the people that believe we're going to keep running up, they've bought it just down here. So those two people are slogging it out inside this little range. Uh, I would not be at all surprised to see a pullback. Certainly, we could actually kiss this line again quite easily. Uh, so uh, one has to be careful here. Nevertheless, the trends are up. And uh, since I've spoken last, I've added a couple of positions. I'm glad to say that they're all going quite nicely. Uh, I wish there was some rocket science behind what I'm doing. There isn't. Just pure old-fashioned trends and a few simple patterns. So. Uh, I don't think I've charted them. Uh, I might have. Let's chart them again. Uh, graph those. And there we go. Uh, if we have a look at this uh, marijuana stock, uh, I couldn't resist this because of the cup and handle. I didn't get in here, folks. I bought in there just where my little line is at a tad above 25 and it's going quite nicely. That cup and handle rarely lets me down. I should have been in here. Should have been. Didn't. Should have been in there with the stop there. But as it broke up, made a rising bottom, broke through that top. That's what traders refer to as a 1, 2, 3. And uh, should have been bought just there at that 25 level. I got in a tad later as it broke that high. Uh, and it's going quite nicely indeed. My stop's already in end at entry on that. Okay, so uh, I've taken a little bit off and I brought my stop uh, to slightly above 25, uh, my entry point. So that one, uh, reasonably happy with. 
the old cup and handle very rarely lets you down folks uh, it's the uh, first pattern uh, that uh, I traded away back in the early 1980s when I moved from seat of the pants to some form uh, of analysis some form of process bought into AMD uh, and uh, uh, as you know, I've had a, a love affair with AMD since I, I got this wonderful move up. Uh, as you can see, and I shouldn't be counting waves, but one, two, three, four, and five, A, B, and C. And I think uh, that with any luck and a fair breeze, that we're going to actually move up here strongly. Uh, this is a what I call a spring setup, not a textbook spring, but certainly that would have been a great place to be in long. But I bought into it, folks, as it broke that little high so I'm only in at 84 so we shall see with a stop loss underneath that low so that's the first that's the second that's the third my mentor Mr. Gann would say it's going to break on the fourth attempt Mr. Gann I hope so sir uh, nevertheless the risk is very very small indeed here uh, and uh, that's what trading's all about nobody knows what's going to happen next folks it's not about forecasting it's about uh, having some form of trade rationale that will allow you to test your trading idea for a very very small amount of money to make a, a big amount of money it's what the Americans call asymmetrical risk to reward that's what Paul Tudor Jones the uh, very famous trader calls it so uh, AMD uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with that we shall see what happens as I say I'm up a dollar uh, big deal uh, and this is square uh, I like square. I like always see, like to see markets respect trend lines like this. It's always an indication that there's some really smart work uh, afoot. Uh, and uh, market uh, ran here, didn't get that. Uh, and uh, as you know, I'm spread betting these. I'm looking for fairly small moves, folks. I think that uh, I need to change that because I should not have got out of this at all. Uh, if you've bought the share, uh, it's so easy to sit with these ups and downs. I'm trying to do that in the UK, but when you're leveraged up five to one, it's just so much more difficult to sit in the pullbacks. Nevertheless, the, I had this from down here. Uh, the money is made just by sitting in the big move. Bought into this, let me see, where's my notes, at 190. As a, a rocket science again, I know. Uh, one two, three, and as it broke uh, through uh, this top, should have got in there, but didn't, got in at 190, it's at 197, uh, and uh, with any luck, I'll get my stop loss up to entry. Through here, then I think we can go a long way on square. Uh, so, uh, that's Roku, and Roku, beautiful trend. Uh, the fundamentals here are not great, uh, but the trend was wonderful uh, as you can see those of you that are doing my swing trading course it pulled back to that last old top uh, and uh, that's always a good place that's a sure sign that there's some institutional people I'll put on the 21 and the 55 I uh, went into the zone it's amazing when a share pulls into the zone uh, and it hits the old top how that confluence in fact uh, times the turn uh, and uh, so I always use 21 and 55 many people say where the hell are the 21 and the 55 when you've been looking at them for a quarter of a century you don't need to put them on the chart folks so where did I get in here above that top one two three and uh, it broke up uh, 236 was my entry point uh, in uh, Roku 236 and I was hit by a fair breeze of news where did that go to a fair breeze of news uh, as I've said many times before every now and then uh, the blind pig will discover the corn uh, the trend uh, was intact uh, and uh, invariably uh, if you've got a share that's trending strongly uh, it uh, reflects the news somebody's got a sniff of it well before it gets to the paper now this I'm still struggling in Newman mining gold's had a nice move up this afternoon it moved up 10 or 12 dollars within a few minutes uh, this afternoon I, I don't know uh, what the announcement was there must have been something I like this flag but Again, my fibs, uh, this from this low, it went to here, it pulled back to here, I got in just there. So this is underwater for me. Uh, it went to here and back to there. It stopped exactly at that 786. I was going to bail underneath that 786 level. But it stopped here so long. That pattern was made famous by uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Gartley. 
Harold McKinley Gartley, and he wrote a book in the 1930s called How to Make Money in Stocks. And that pattern was on page 222 of the book. And my friend Larry, Larry Pesavetis, named the pattern uh, a Gartley 222. Uh, and uh, that was a particularly good place to get in. I'm still sweating in this, as you can see. It's up on yesterday, but it's given up a, a bit of that, so I'm still sweating in that one. Uh, we shall see what happens. So th that's what I've been up to. I, I wish it was uh, uh, rocket science. All I'm trying to do is to find a share with good growth fundamentals uh, that's in the throes of a strong trend. Many of them I've been much better if I just sat in them for the last six months. But as I say, I'm spread betting them with leverage for income uh, and uh, handling the pullbacks with leverage uh, is really, really difficult indeed. So uh, that's what I've been up to. So let's have a look at the UK. There's the UK. That was last night's close. And we have a very similar situation in the UK. Market timing uh, indicator 1.61. The buy sell ratio has been over 4. So we were close to a mega overbought situation. So we've got a uh, a, a market that's come a long way that probably needs a pullback. Uh, as you can see, Vectorvest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time. That's a very healthy sign. 813 on a buy, uh, 203 on a sell. We haven't seen that for a while. And uh, the fellows at Bloomberg say that that run that we've had in the FTSE 100 is the uh, highest momentum move we've seen in the index in quite a spell. Uh, so... Uh, if I have a look now, and I haven't done anything here, I have money available to buy polymetal uh, if, and I'm hoping, we're going to get a close above 1900. If we get a close above 1900, I have cash put on one side to buy a gold stock. I haven't done that yet. Uh, I was very close to it just before the Pfizer announcement, just as well I didn't. Uh, so. Uh, Sylvania has been great for us. So let's just chart these folks. Uh, and uh, in the UK portfolio, I'm doing my best not to be a swing trader and to let the darn things run. Uh, and uh, it's taken a great deal of uh, strength to do that. And I've written about that this weekend in the Vectorvest essay for those of you that get it. But uh, that's Sylvania Platinum. Uh, that's my entry point from that outside day. There's my 21 and 55. It gave us a few frights along the way, but that's just the way it is. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, it it pulled back here a little bit. It's come a long way. Uh, without a doubt, it's going to be bid at 70 for sure. So anybody chickens out, it's going to go to 70. But the platinum price has had a great run. And the technical target here, folks, is uh, about a pound. So let's just hope that is going to be the case. Plus, uh, is uh, did what shares do. It pulled back to this confluence of the trend line and the old top. It just all shares do that. That's It didn't do that by magic, folks. It did that because that's where it was bid. And I assure you that institutional traders, uh, if you spoke to them about a stochastic or a MACD, they would think it's a pub around the corner. Uh, they draw some very, very simple lines on the chart. And as you can see, uh, it went uh, this little bit of uh, pessimism. It went down below that. Somebody panicked there, but it was bought and that was used as a uh, a really good place for institutional people to get back in. There's the earnings per share rising. I think that the CMC results yesterday, which were wonderful, CMC uh, in the same industry as Plus, uh, probably give it a bit of a, a boost. Uh, but if you want to get the big moves, you have to handle these pullbacks to all tops. That's just the way it is. Otherwise, you're going to get stopped out. You'll be, uh, unfortunately, what happens to most people is that they get out there. After buying up there, they get out here. Uh, and uh, that, uh, uh, I've seen people make that same mistake for a generation. As you can see, if I draw this carefully, that confluence comes into place. So that's good. We've just got to sit. The money's made by the sitting, not by the thinking, folks. Uh, that's Lion Trust Asset Management doing its best to break out of this. A lot of resistance here from that February high. Uh, it's doing its best. 
so it's got to be given the benefit of the doubt. Uh, that's Avon Rubber. Uh, as you can see, ran the stops down there. See how it went down there and then reversed in the one day. Uh, and now it's pushing. Uh, one, two, three. Uh, we probably get another pullback before it goes. Uh, so uh, moving averages are still good. Earnings per share is still good. <sighs> Needs to be held. That's the GB Group. Wonderful push on earnings here. Came back. I assure you that it was bid here at eight pounds, and it's now uh, starting to move up. That's Team Seventeen. I like it. Uh, uh, I came back here in three waves into this consolidation, and uh, it uh, a very strong growth story here, folks. Over the last year, uh, it's grown earnings from eleven pence to eighteen pence. You know that that's quite something in this environment. Clearly, gaming. Uh, the sentiment is that. We're all sitting at home doing very little else but gaming. Uh, uh, and that's wonderful situation here in CCC. Pulled back a little bit uh, with the Pfizer announcement, but has to be given the benefit of the doubt, uh, I think. Uh, Cranswick, uh, well, it came off that 78% retracement. Look at the earnings per share. Clearly, we're going to get our right shoulders here. So uh, I would suspect that it went above that high a lot of people would have bought into it up here and it's now going to come back and test their patience uh, it has to be held that's games workshop finding support at that old high you see the common theme that's running through here if you want the big ones you've got to handle this and clearly uh, I keep telling people at our Q&A sessions that all trades end badly sooner or later uh, if you'd uh, sold that exactly at that 120 I can pretty much guarantee the darn thing would be 150 now so uh, you have to decide are you going to sell out at a target or are you going to actually I'll try and hunt for the big winners uh, in this particular account I'm trying to do something that I haven't been that successful with over the years is letting them run uh, and uh, so that one's going this is Halma great results yesterday unbelievable results clearly in the price it's left the February high a mile behind this is a great stock uh, and uh, that's Tristel uh, earnings per share growing pushing on these highs has to be held it's on a buy recommendation and that's uh, JD Sports uh, pushing on highs as well has to be held uh, and uh, this is Hilton Foods in this time frame doing absolutely nothing at all if you look at over five years you get an idea of the pedigree of the share uh, and uh, uh, it's left the February high well behind. I wouldn't be at all surprised, folks, to see it take out that low of uh, sometime in the middle of this year. That's where all the stops uh, will be, and that's where the liquidity will be. And sooner or later, I would suspect there's a big bank of orders down there. And uh, quite e if somebody panics, uh, then it'll go to the bid. So don't be at all surprised if you see a spike down underneath that low. That's going to test or resolve. Uh, but uh, it looks m much, much better on that time frame. And it would be what uh, uh, Mark and uh, Bill and our other Mark from Godalving, Godalming calls uh, an earnings per share king. Uh, those are the three men that have championed the earnings per share king. And uh, you would think after all these years, I would have had the wit to take the uh, uh, ringer off the blessed telephone before starting these. I haven't got the dexterity uh, I'm afraid to edit that out. I still haven't worked out how to do the editing bit, so please excuse me for that. Uh, so, uh, steady as she goes, we've got a very overbought market in our hands. I would not be at all surprised to see a pullback, uh, but the trends are still solidly in place. Uh, and I'm holding positions in the UK, and I've taken a few positions in the USA. Remember, the positions in the USA are spread bets, and if I see any sign of danger, uh, well, I'll be running for cover very quickly. Uh, on two of them, the stop losses are already at entry, and I've taken a little bit off. Well, it's Friday. Uh, I'll hopefully see everyone at the uh, VectorVest uh, UK Q&A on Monday afternoon at half past one UK time. Uh, anybody that's not a VectorVest subscriber that would like a, an invite, uh, well, just ship me off an email, david.paul at vectorvest.com. Thanks very much indeed. Bye-bye.